So uh, let us begin our discussion session on uh, this write-up. Um, or rather, this is the speech of Richard Hamming, titled You and Your Research. Uh, this speech was delivered at uh, Bell Communication Research Colloquium on 7th March 1986. And this was addressed to the young uh, entrants into the Bell Laboratories. So what we will do is, uh, we will uh, go in a serial order so that everyone gets a chance. Uh, that is, we start with this end. And then um, what we will do is, each person let him make only one point. Because it will happen that if you know all the points are finished by the first few, then the other people will not get time to respond. Now, when um, one person makes a point, if others want to say something relevant to that point, right, they are welcome to do so. So the person will initiate the discussion for that particular point. But we'll stick to just one point. Each person should stick to one point. Okay. So let us begin from this end. What we will do is, uh, you just introduce yourself. You tell your name and um, uh, which is your department and whether or not you are doing a PhD. And then you start. Hello, I am uh, Vinay Baudekar. I am in the Department of Chemical Engineering and I am a, I am a PhD student. Uh, the point I would like to, one point that I would like to make about uh, Hamming's uh, speech is that he he has emphasized on two uh, on two things. There are uh, two points he has made. He says that uh, one uh, thing we will stick to one point. Yeah. Huh. No, these are like related. Probably complementary to each other. Okay. One thing he says that no problem is not important in the sense that every problem may be important or is important. And the second thing he says that you have to realize. What is the limit of that importance? Uh, uh, like if he makes a statement that uh, once Shannon came up with information theory, Shannon stopped thinking of small problems and that is why Shannon could not go any further. Second point he makes is that even if pro all problems were considered important, uh, Bell Labs never worked on three problems. One was time travel, second was anti-gravity and third was teleportation. So he said that in Bell Labs, at, like during his work years, they were made to realize that there is a limit to, you know, how much importance do you attach to a particular problem. Hi, I am Kishore Malani, I am tech student from Electrical Engineering Department. Uh, before uh, going for my point, I would like to add to his point. Uh, he said that uh, by looking at the problem, you should know whether you can attack the problem. Do you have that, uh, uh, like are you prepared? or uh, whether you, you should know whether you can attack the problem enough that you reach the problem. As we discussed in the class that you take a problem and you should be able to kill that. So probably I think uh, he meant that by considering these three problems, he, he said that uh, if you know that you cannot completely kill that problem and yes, stressing the point of selling, like uh, you come up with a solution and then sell it to the scientific community. With respect to that, he mentioned that these were the problems. That's why the Bell Labs did not work on these. And uh, the important point which I felt uh, good for myself was that he said that regarding the uh, research versus management, which one one should select or like that. So he said that it's your vision and your interests. And uh, your interests may change over a period of time. You should allow this. and. The, you should develop a vision and that will decide whether you should be in the technical side or on the management side. But once you know that I want to work in this, uh, either in technology or management, stick with it. Don't try to do both the things. That's what I like most of myself. Uh, I am Rajendra Patil. I am QIP PhD student in Electrical Engineering Department. In? Electrical Engineering Department. One of the characteristics of a uh, successful scientist is uh, having a courage. So I liked uh, this uh, most in his, uh, his write up. Hello, myself, Ame Diwan. I am a research scholar. I am a research scholar in Department of Chemical Engineering. 
रिगार्डिंग विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू दिस आर्टिकल वन स्टेटमेंट और वन कमेंट दे हैव गिवन दैट रिगार्डिंग द स्ट्रेंथ्स ऑफ इंडिविजुअल्स ही हैज गिवन कमेंट ऑन दैट यू हैव टू बिलीव इन यूर सेल्फ वॉट यू आर डूइंग एंड यू हैव टू स्टिक टू यूर प्रिंसिपल्स दैट वॉट यू हैव लर्न एंड वॉट यू हैव टू इम्प्लीमेंट इन बिटवीन देर आर डिफरेंट स्टेजेस यू हैव टू कम अक्रॉस दैट वेदर यू हैव टू implement in terms of your professional approach whether you have to uh, implement your knowledge or principles what you have learn with respect to your fundamental study approach with respect to your bell labs and all these things they are more over concern over with respect to their uh, what we can call is their professional approach in terms of uh, selling the product as previous people have already told that and one more thing they have mentioned regarding that ego and super ego uh, concept comes in picture when a person get at elevated height or uh, you can say some anybody uh, receives a prize like nobel prize in that case the thinking ability slightly changes this is the one learning or you can say that the output of this article or that comment they have given uh, my name is ram krishna ghosh i am a phd scholar in chemical engineering department in that uh, in that article what he what he have mentioned one point he has mentioned that courage to attack the problem that i think is a very important because uh, when you doing doing research or some something in uh, i mean you are not doing in the uh, average whatever others people are thinking you are doing something very new so you have to be enough courage that you are whatever you are believe or whatever hypothesis you are doing and stick on that and doing whatever is and then and then it is possible to do something very new or do something where it's measurable yes. hello myself anubhumati i am from chemical engineering department phd student uh, apart from this but from discussing several uh, cases uh, about uh, researchers and how they are approaching the problem Uh, how they are approaching the problem he uh, his concluding remark also emphasizes uh, many of the research scholars problem that is um, luck favors a prepared mind so all his case studies and uh, finally sh- uh, gives a path that how one should take the problem approach and prepare the mind so most of the times many of us if we get stuck and all uh, uh, we we sort of blame other things so this gives importance to our uh, preparation both uh, technically and mentally thank you myself suresh m school of management this article give for best hypothesis development uh, you are a phd school yes sir So we got some idea of hypothesis development and formulations what is the idea can you specific thing about it not idea i i thought this for in like road map of entire research just for outline for this okay how to do research that is what you got yes sir thank you sir hello good afternoon i am shamlan risham wala and doing a phd in the school of biosciences and bioengineering uh, i missed your first name shamlan s h m l a n s h a m l a n okay and biochemistry right uh, biosciences okay an important point uh, in uh, richard having's uh, uh, talk was on how a researcher should pr- paint a broader picture he should not uh, when he is invited to give a talk he should not speak uh, on the very technical topic rather he should first give a broad idea of the field uh, so that uh, it's available and accessible to a wider audience and uh, once he has given that background of, of uh, what he calls a wider picture it's only then after that that he should go on to discuss what he has done himself this will uh, set the whole research which the scientist is doing or the researcher is doing in in a in a broader framework and that was a very important to- to- topic which he discussed Thank okay. you. Also, see whether uh, you yourself feel better standing and talking because sometimes you know you can talk forcefully if you stand up, but not as forcefully when you are sitting down. In a conference, of course, it is very very important uh, if you are participating in a discussion or uh, you know asking question, please stand up and do it. Right. So uh, as a practice, let us do it here. Okay. 
good evening my name is mukundan uh, school of management doing my phd the point which i would like to stress here is the point of ambiguity uh, a scholar a researcher has to know a researcher scientist has to know the position of what he is is developing he should have the capability to both support this development and also criticize this development the stand he takes so that he knows where his research can be applied and he also knows limitation of his research helps him helps him and the team to develop the system even more better so this presence of ambiguity which can also be linked to the ego of the researcher because uh, when somebody else criticizes that you cannot work his ego should be such way that it should accept those limitations yes so this is one point in addition to what earlier a point given was of selling and there are three things with respect to selling of a scientist one is he should be able to write clearly writing clearly means you look into position of a reader when you are going to read a journal or article what makes you to stop at a particular article and read it if you are able to apply that when you write your paper or a presentation naturally you will be able to sell your concept number 2 was you should be able to talk both in the informal context and also in a formal context this makes the art of selling to a scientist better okay thanks Good. hello <coughs> my name is vinod i am a research scholar in the school of management the thing which i would like to tell regarding the article was he said that there is no point in really fighting with the system to a great extent uh, he says an example where he, the interpersonal skills he developed within the group helped him a lot and he says that when you really want to fight the system you cannot do a first rate work and this was important because somehow we feel that the first rate researchers are first rate people and they should be uh having the social conscience to fight against the evils and fight against the system when the system is going wrong but he says that the more effort you really put into fighting the system somehow the effort which you can put into your own research activity somehow gets reduced so he says that leave it to others if they are really fighters and if you are really a good researcher try to do it you are part well that's something which i like well thank you in vasudevan from computer science department my research scholar actually uh, one thing is um, about the age factor when you famous when you famous then it is very difficult to um, attempt uh, work in a uh, simple problems so that is the reason if a person is famous in his uh, very young then after that his work is not that much important that means famous i am arun hom from school of management doing a phd uh, the i like to about the most about the other is the scientist should uh, the researcher should know the uh, the strength and weakness and how to overtake the weakness for the betterment or we can say how to coordinate the efforts also hard working just not sufficient we should be more sensible uh, that's a, a critical i think advice which one likes more not only uh, hard work but intelligently directed well directed hard work that is important yes i am kv rao a school of management research scholar uh, what i found in this uh, article is the life of a research scholar a researcher one who starts from its starting of the entry point to the end but out of which as a management angle what i found is if a researcher got achieved something like a nobel prize immediately after that he looks at a bigger things to achieve he leaves the what he is doing at the smaller or existing things he is not doing so where he falters and he could not continue his research in a better way and second thing what he found is if a person is capable of doing the bigger things to be done with the team then only he should take the management or leading the organization to do the activity as a research else we should not go for a management that's what i found right Good evening to all. I am Abdul Razak, doing PhD from School of Management. Uh, first, let me thank uh, Professor Kamakal uh, wholeheartedly because he introduced such a wonderful uh, article. And really, while reading, while going through this particular article, uh, most of our you know doubts, most of our 
you know, points which we were searching through textbooks and through such, you know, uh, lectures, you know, uh, we got them in a very lucid manner. So, of course, to highlight, there are many points which my all friends, you know, putting here. But wh what I like most is uh, a, an inherent quality which should be there with research scholar is attaching himself or herself emotionally to the work, to the problem. So, emotional commitment to the problem, which is at the hand for, for undertaking research is most important because the moment when we are emotionally attached on a problem, naturally we work day and day and day continuously without paying attention on any smaller details. The moment when we are emotionally committed, then what happens? That continuous work later on will assign to our subconscious mind. Suppose if we, we are facing some problem, we are unable to get an answer, but still we are working hard because we are emotionally committed. We want some results out of that. We want some queries are to be resolved. So that time we are doing a lot of work and in the process we sleep, then our subconscious mind come into the room. Then what happens? Subconscious mind takes that assignment as a reworking problem. Then it starts reworking and eventually at the end that subconscious mind will give the answer. And th this is true because suppose if we don't attach ourselves emotionally to a particular problem, then what happens? Subconscious mind goof around. It moves here and there and look at the uh, things which are not that useful, which are not related to the problem. So sometimes we see so many useless things in our dreams. Instead of getting or instead of pow uh, exploiting the power of subconscious mind, we simply leave that subconscious mind to uh, move around. And the beauty the, the, the way he has presented the concept of emotional commitment and using the power of subconscious mind is what I liked uh, most. And to one of uh, the points which uh, Mr. Mukundan ha highlighted regarding ambiguity, so there uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the author, you know, uh, uh, the speaker, he provided uh, or rather he gave an idea to be uh, a bal to take a balanced approach because ambiguity basically it is something related to uh, a total belief or total doubt. So total belief and total doubt is not advisable. We should take a balanced path so that we can solve the problem. So these are the things which I like. Thank you. Yes. I am Varsha Suralkar, finally a B.Tech student from SNDT University. Uh, what I liked was, uh, he says, the, the, our, our mind should be always prepared to tackle any problem and uh, we should work hard on our uh, research so that uh, our research uh, would be uh, successful and uh, would be a, a good kind of a research. So, SMDT means uh, which uh, discipline? Are you? Computer, Computer science. science. Achha. Hello everybody. I am Ms. Swati Mohite. Uh, I have done my master's in pure electronics. I am a lecturer in St. Francis Engineering College, Mumbai University. Uh, most of the points are covered by till now. So I would just like to add a few to what Ms. Sambu said. Uh, she, was, she said uh, correctly that luck favors those who are prepared well. To illustrate this, uh, Dr. Richard Hamming has given two examples. Once, uh, one example is very well known of Newton and second one is of Shannon. When Newton's, f uh, many, of the, many of his researches are including some, some or the other story behind it. Like uh, when it was about gravitational force, it was like he saw an apple falling on the ground and then from that probably he did a hypothesis and later on it was proved. But even though this is one of the fact that he could, uh, he could uh, give this hypothesis because of this uh, incidence, but we have to emphasize on this also that he persuaded that particular problem he tried to go into the roots of those problems and then only he could name him uh, he could have his name established as a scientist uh, hello myself vinay amte i am a phd research scholar in the department of chemical engineering so starting from the very first day until now i am quite flummoxed 
uh, whether all this research that is uh, discoveries or invention are the outcome of uh, some sort of serendipity. Uh, she has cited one example that uh, Newton saw that apple falling from the tree and uh, it was just accidental fortune, I think so. If that apple was not fallen, then I don't think that gravitational force has been discovered. Uh, likewise, the word catalysis, it, it was also one type of a uh, serendipity word. Berzelius was performing certain experiment and suddenly that uh, thermometer was broken in that, uh, in that beaker. And that uh, whatever the mercury which was dissolved in the uh, reaction mixture and that from that word the catalysis were originated. So whether it is the part of necessity or it is one type of a serendipity which leads to the discoveries of invention. So still this is not clear. So is it serendipity or? A necessity. We call it as a invention or discoveries are uh, mother of some type of invention. I will uh, tell you an interesting. Uh, uh, I will tell you an interesting quote, and then she can, uh, and then she can uh, uh, respond. The interesting quote is: Someone examined this hypothesis. Necessity is the mother of invention, and he said, necessity is not the mother of invention. Knowledge and experiment are its parents. Okay, so th there is this point of view that. Knowledge and experiment, that is what leads to invention, not necessity. Yeah, you want to say something? Uh, I, I beg to differ with Mr. Vinay, as he said that it may, if the apple might not have fallen down or he might not have seen that, that uh, the uh, this particular uh, research of gravitational force or invention of gravitational force would never have been come out. But just try and think how many of us have seen apples or anything fall, falling down from any whatever from whatever height have we ever thought of that in the first place no certainly not it needs a vision for a researcher to prove himself and i think that's what was there in newton right so uh, the gravitation is we can say discovery uh, not an invention because uh, discovery, yeah, different. Ha, huh, discovery. Right. No, certain uh, level of commitment is required for any type of research or some invention or discoveries. Yes. So Newton was having more uh, commitment, so obviously he has discovered that thing. Yes. So uh, that uh, Richard Fleming also has mentioned the same thing that we should have certain commitment or full commitment to our research work. Then only we can uh, succeed in our destination. <coughs> okay. Now he has mentioned some few factors that luck, courage, age, willpower then ideal working environment are essential for the any type of a discoveries, invention or research work. So moreover, one, one uh, colleague has also mentioned that uh, most of the creativity is originated from the subconscious state of mind. It is also, in fact, it is also true that if we hammer our brain, some output generally will be there. Yes. So we should get totally involved in our research. Yes. That commitment is most required. Yes. So that is my uh, analysis for that. Yes. Now, uh, yeah. Uh, someone wants to respond. We'll uh, let them respond, and then uh, you can continue. Now, I also want to tell you an advantage of standing up. Right? In many situations, when several people want to speak at the same time, the one who stands up gets the precedence. Okay? Automatically. So it will help you. Right? To you know, you will get a chance as compared to others who don't stand up. The famous uh, statement of Newton himself is standing on the shoulders of giant. Standing on the shoulders of giant. Yeah. So primarily, most of the inventions or discoveries, either yeah, can be invention or discovery, it has been based on serendipity only. And the uh, second thing is, science evol evolution of science has always been cumulative in nature. It's primarily cumulative in nature. When you look at a product or any other applications, it could be disruptive. Whereas science development has always been cumulative which means there's an incremental change happening. When you say incremental change, it has to be, in the serendipity focus of it is a little more. Being serendipity doesn't reduce the necessity for us to have the uh, qualities what this talk gave us. These talk, the, talk, the qualities identified in this talk only helps us to apply the serendipity and then convert it into a proper outcome. Okay. Hello, uh, myself Munish Sharma. I am MTech final year student in the Department of Chemical Engineering. So 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक प्रोफेसर श्रीपाद कमालकर फॉर गिविंग अस दिस गुड आर्टिकल फॉर रीडिंग एंड आई एम रियली थैंकफुल टू यू सर एंड रिगार्डिंग टू दिस आर्टिकल बाय प्रोफेसर हेमिंग ही हैज ही हैज मेड अ लॉट ऑफ पॉइंट्स रिगार्डिंग वट 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 आर द एसेंशियल क्वालिटीज ऑफ अ गुड रिसर्चर बट आई हैव नोटेड टू थ्री पॉइंट्स फर्स्ट फर्स्ट पॉइंट आई वुड लाइक टू डिस्कस इज द कमिटमेंट रिगार्डिंग कमिटमेंट ही सेज दैट लाइक इफ़ यू वॉन्ट टू डू गुड गुड काइंड ऑफ वर्क फर्स्ट क्लास वर्क दैन यू नीड टू डू यू मस्ट हैव गुड गुड कमिटमेंट दैट हंड्रेड परसेंट कमिटमेंट सो इवन इफ यू हैव एवरेज स्किल्स यू डोंट हैव गुड स्किल्स स्टिल यू कैन सक्सीड इन योर वर्क एंड सेकेंड थिंग ही सेज दैट नेवर फाइट विद द सिस्टम because that in that case you will unnecessarily waste your energies and you will not be able to uh, focus on your uh, work so by uh, so for that he has given one example like uh, in uh, one of his colleague he he was taking care of all his mails and posts uh, and he was not allowing his secretary to uh, take care of those mails so later and uh, later on uh, the hemming asked the secretary that what was the reason so she told that he himself is not allowing me to uh, go through all his uh, mails and so how can i if he is not ready so by this he, hemming was uh, uh, trying to make a point that uh, uh, if you do like this kind of work then the the research which you are doing you will be uh, you will not be able to devote time so channelize your energy uh, think about those and third point he makes that uh, like uh, he makes a point about dress like uh, he he was uh, initially um, wearing some absurd kind of dress so for by wearing those that kind of dress he was not getting self respect from the people around him so later on he changed that uh, for that kind of dress so he he got what he uh, that respect so by this he meant that uh, sometimes we need to change according to our surroundings we 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 should not be adamant or we should not be we should not be inflexible we should be flexible to mold ourselves that is a very good quality of a researcher and the commitment part i like the most like you have to give it 100% for first class work by first class work he mean that that should be like two criteria he has specified one like sometimes you you may you may or you may not get nobel prize and secondly uh, the work should be like this so that the other coming generations could follow that work they they can start from their from your, your work from where you have finished thank you good evening everybody uh, my name is uh, vijay hanumanta honkalaskar uh, i am doing phd in uh, department of energy science and engineering <coughs> almost all finds have covered but uh, i would like to emphasize on uh, one problem uh, one point which uh, hemming has uh, ah here i just right? want to mention so when we introduce yourself uh, it may not be uh, necessary to tell the complete name the point is uh, you are uh, telling your name so that others can relate to you so sometimes when we tell a long name then people may forget right later on it helps people to remember if you tell just you know that name by which you would like to be called and uh, it is uh, he talks about the great scientist uh, that uh, they don't read uh, too much of theories they read only uh, that part of theory which is just required to go ahead or uh, they simply don't believe in all the theories they believe in only that part of theory which is just required to go ahead in that field and then they identify the limitations or the errors in that field or that theory and then they propose new theories to replace that existing theory so means uh, i like this point uh, very much that is so anyone wants to make any other points which have been left out yes one point uh, which he said about himself is that uh, he always surrounded himself with uh, better people which are more uh, intellectually better or uh, which are who are very good in their own fields so he never used to sit with a mathematicians during his lunch break he, he used to go to phys physicists and once he found that uh, quite a few physicists good physicists have left or there is not nothing much important to discuss then he shifted to ke uh, chemistry guys and then so he always like challenged his intellectual mind and kept himself surrounded by a better 
people so that he can think in a broader sense yes very good and uh, i have one question one point was not clear is that i did not understand properly about the doors open and doors closed point of view could you please so anyone wants to comment on that doors open and doors closed yeah basically doors open is doors closed is not the room or anything you are open to all your knowledge should be shared you should not be kept inside if you are brilliant intelligent but you have done something until and unless you share with others you never get a fame name anything until you share it then knowledge will grow and you learn much better than with others so you can get sharing you can learn as well as you give and take so you have to be always open to the outside that is people should able to come free and talk to you it is a relationship knowledge and what are you to so the door should be always open it should not be closed so it's a metaphorical sentence yeah basically but uh, one point he, which i took it is that uh, the people who sit with doors closed is they they are able to concentrate fully on their work and they come up with a better that result that is true that also you mentioned you closed people they work very hard until you share it the work what you have done inside for 30 years it is not useful to the society and not useful to the uh, Im- that is the improvement of the knowledge or a scientific things so what is the use of working 30 years when you close the door your purpose of thing has gone also uh, in a lighter way i would say nowadays one can uh, have the doors closed but interact on email <laughs> <laughs> no uh, i mean it can, it, ha- it does happen yes. right and uh, it ha- it can happen it should not happen but it can happen that you know somehow your uh, physical neighbor is not necessarily the person with whom right uh you are able to get along It should not happen but i'm just saying so in which case you, you may not keep your door uh, open in that sense but i think here it is a much wider sense that is being uh, talked about but it does make a difference yes if um uh, if you see um, as faculty member you are not a faculty member definitely uh, you feel more comfortable uh, you know interacting with the person who keeps the doors open there's no doubt about it no doubt even among the households whichever house keeps the door open right i mean people feel somehow that doors and windows open. even people interested to share their ideas one who keeps open yes if you are close nobody will come and speak to you also but of course his point uh, was also that uh, some people may not interact but yet they may do lot of good work that was your point yes you can some exceptions may be there but i think the, what is being talked about is by and large that is the thing by and large uh, without any kind of interaction um, it may be very exceptional right so people may be doing good work uh, in his concluding remarks he says it is a poor workman who blames his tools so that is one very important statement i mean the point is you have given given a situation and you have to work through it and you have to figure out how to work through it yes the a good workman will work with a given small set of tools yes and still come up with something very path breaking yes but one in fact uh, he has made the statement that if the working conditions are little bit difficult then you are likely to do good work rather than situation when everything is available to you right that is the kind of statement he has made one more very important i uh, let us give him chance sir ah. and uh, regarding that he he already told ki if it is uh, the prob- situation is bad then and then only we can identify the problem and we can attack that he he mentioned at quite a few places that if we turn around the situation or a problem or if, if yes. we look at it from a different angle then we can do much better work yes. than what was earlier yes so at uh, this point we have stressed in uh, two different contexts one is that creativity is ability to look at the same thing as everyone else but think something different then we have also said that education is not about learning diverse subjects but diverse ways to the same subject okay third we have emphasized in uh, problem solving that reformulation of the statement of the problem is a very powerful method of solving the problem so uh, that is a point that has been you know brought out by him also that turning the st- uh, situation around statement around 
how you can do that uh, almost in related to that what he say if you are not able to get a solution don't worry either you change the goal post or the way you did but you prefer to the, uh, the way you did so you could succeed yes instead of uh, just keeping quiet okay yeah there was someone else uh -huh. he mentions was that one shouldn't assert one's ego he talks about how somebody would uh, dress uh, in office and he would not be taken seriously by the other people around him and he felt he was doing what he wanted to do but then he didn't get along well with others it's only when one changes one attitude so that you are more accept acceptable with the people around you that you are taken seriously and that's a very important uh, thing to consider for scientists at least So on the point of ego, I would like to uh, add a few things. Uh, basically, when, when a person is not uh, uh, looking at the truth, mm. all the scientists, great researchers, they always, their target is the truth. Mm. The moment when a person is reaching tr truth or, you know, a f a found truth, uh, their false ego naturally uh, go down. Almost uh, they never, uh, you know, come with that kind of ego. So that false ego dies. And what uh, you know uh, comes out is the ego of reality, the ego of truth. And uh, he suggests that this kind of ego, which is based on truth, should be retained. The moment when we retain, that means uh, the person, the researcher, will have that conviction, that courage to stand for truth all the time. Therefore, the moment one gets ego based on truth, should be retained. So that is yes. what uh, one point I would like to add. And another thing is. Uh, a very interesting correlation uh, relation given that is knowledge and productivity is like a compound interest. Yes. So this point uh, they highlight. For example, if two persons are working and if one person uh, with little effort, say if he works 10% extra, then definitely that person may uh, you know surpass the other. So yes. this this in in long run he will surpass by a large yeah. amount. But, yeah, it because is it is like a interest. iterative process. Yes. So that concept is floated. So these are so small differences in the beginning uh, end up shown as you know a by the jump. time 20 30 years yeah it's, a, it's going yes. to be a big jump and for that you know the drive uh, initiative is important thank you i would like to make one more point uh, yes uh, just let us uh, give some yeah. uh, sir one of the most philosophical question uh, why should one do world class research he says uh, the success and fame are sort of dividends in his opinion, what he says is that one should not work for the output, the result. One should actually do it for the sake of uh, for the kind of struggle that one has put. He says the value is in the struggle more than that is in the result. So the kind of path that you take, the struggle, the effort that you put, that is that is great. That gives you great joy rather than the outcome of it. So this is what I feel is the most important. Man. He also makes one important point that as a researcher, you, sh you should be well enough, uh, like sensible, so that you can judge the fallacies in the system. Like for that, he uh, gave one quote uh, that when library was shifted to some far, 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 far place, uh, one of his friend asked for a bicycle, but he could not get due to some red tapism. So in that case, uh, his friend uh, sensed that thing like this was a problem in the system. So immediately he was not he was not pursuing that bicycle, and he concentrated his energy on more on his research. Yes. So he rose to the president of Bell Labs. Okay. So as a researcher, this quality must be there. Like you must be sensible enough to judge the surrounding. Yes. So that's uh, regarding the fact that uh, research uh, is not only in the outcome, but the manner which in which you approach problems or struggles. Um, uh, this uh, point of view is very important. For instance, you know, look at this quotation. A research is not only finding out something you don't know. It is also finding that you don't know something. It is not only finding something you don't know, but finding that you don't know something. That is also in a large part of the education. Because many times students feel, they start with a lot of uh, preconceived notions in the beginning. And uh, first one, one and a half years, they find that, oh, they don't seem to know so many things. right? Now that itself is a part of the process, research process. Okay, this self-doubt and uh, some sort of a, um, um, uh, kind of uh, experiences which go against their initial assumptions. Right? 
they feel something is wrong with them. Maybe uh, they are not made for research. This kind of things also can arise. And they might have thought that, you know, they are very intelligent, they, are, they had got high marks, but one, one and a half years and they don't seem to get anywhere. How can it be? Right? When will that stage come when I will also see writing a, I will also see myself writing a paper like somebody else is doing? Or is it that I am not capable of doing it? So this uh, period of self-doubt and so on, in the initial phase, okay, or finding that you don't know something is there, but that is an important part of research. Okay? Because after that only the other phase comes. Okay. Yes. Sir, uh, another point what he talked, discussed about is the approach great scientists should have towards their work. That should be a sense of aggressiveness in the approach. Uh, he gives an example of how they were fortunate enough to be aggressive and uh, first to work on great problems and become great scientists. The situation of the country and the world, the Second World War and then the development of Lo Almo laboratory for nuclear bomb development. Even though he was giving some examples of even though they were having the data to develop the fission energy, fission bomb, they waited for it to be up, uh, developed by the competitors and then they came out with the atomic bomb. Okay. So th the, the thing is that uh, th there should be assertiveness, aggressiveness in the scientists to approach a problem. To have this uh, properly, the situation in the country should support it. So it, it can be a negative approach in the sense that if the country or the world situation is peaceful, there will not be much of aggressiveness towards great research. So this is one of the negative view towards having a greater scientist. There is the same thing as saying there should be some challenge in the environment. If everything is available, then you do not feel. Uh, at one or two points, yes, in a subtle way, he has uh, stressed the importance of discipline. Uh, like initially before coming to Bell Labs, he was at another place where he found himself to be not doing a very important task. So he's, uh, there began his uh, journey of knowing what is the difference between uh, average scientist and a high class working mm -hmm. scientist. So, and also, so then, and uh, while he was working with Dr. Tucky, he, uh, he compared himself and then he went to the, uh, his uh, department head, Dr. Bode, and then he realized the importance of hard work. So then he's, he has given his own example that every Friday afternoon he used to sit and think only upon the larger problems in his field. So over a period of many years, he that helped him to do better work. And also, he, say, he, uh, he said on a, on a lighter sense that uh, he used to uh, sometimes neglect his wife and give more time towards his work. So that helped him to do better work. So over a period of long time with discipline, you can achieve more results. Okay. Also, um, all of us should note that um, if you want to do good research in our own areas, we should be aware of 10 important problems in our area of interest. It's something that we can make note of, right? So, we should be aware of 10 important problems in our area on which one can work on or people are working. Anything else? So it was just quotation, uh, it reminds me a quotation of a great Sufi scientist. Hmm. Uh, uh, he says, we must know enough to know that we do not know. Yes. Uh, really, you know, knowing, uh, uh, I mean, the people who, who knows less normally pose much. Therefore, uh, the, the art of a scientist is basically to search for more and more knowledge. And uh, another thing what I learned out of this is, you know, uh, rather, you know, I, I was just trying to get uh, uh, myself inspired out of that. Uh, it's like, uh, blessed are those who are sincere in seeking truth. Blessed are those who are si sincere in seeking truth. Such are the people with rational minds who eventually... Um, so, um, we will have a short break for five minutes so that I can just collect those points which have not been covered from this article and then we will have a concluding session.